recently, I mean, very recently, like uh, two or three months ago, I started working on this. And uh, it started because we wanted to make game more popular. And we have a user retention problem because they, people, we promote K. Hey, it's nice, it's great, it does all of this. And they try it. And they get frustrated at some point. Hey, it has bugs and it's hard to use. And uh, I'm bashing K right now. <laughs> and uh, from my point of view, I should, should do that because I need to improve it. <clears throat> but having tools which are good to use is good for <clears throat> both beginners because they can onboard faster. You can learn it faster. They can uh, <clears throat> do their, they fix the problem much easier. But it's also important for people that already know K because they can do their work much faster. It's supposed to be a tool that helps you with problems. So <clears throat> how I started working on this was somebody on Slack sent a message, hey, can you do this with K? Can you generate an IDE with your semantics and should give you all the things which you expect from an ID, like colors, uh, colors, syntax highlighting, or go to definition, or uh, execute a program and shows you exactly what you're executing in memory stuff in, inside the ID, which should look pretty. And we, the answer was kind of no. We have all these uh, command line tools, which are powerful, but if you ever type compile help, is going to show a huge list of options which you have to come to them and see this does this and this does that. It takes a lot of time. It's not fun. And then I started looking on Visual Studio Code and there is an extension for K. That was actually somebody from Yash, a student, which made a syntax highlighter in 2017, I think. And uh, it has over 1,000 downloads. So people want something like this. I was kind of surprised, but don't really see this. Okay, I'm going to talk about it. And uh, then uh, somebody else came in and added a new, up, a new updated version. And hey, this is something we want. And then started looking into it. I, I found about the language server protocol. Who heard about it? Okay, not that many people. Okay, I'm going to go into details. So the Microsoft guys from uh, Visual Studio Code implemented something called the language server protocol, which is something like K. It's some, you implement it once, and it works for every IDE. And uh, it's based on events. So I'm inside the IDE, and I implement my server for my language. The IDE sends something like, give me the definition for this particular piece of syntax at this point or location. The language server is going to say, I understand what this is. I'm going to go back to the ID with a message saying that, hey, you should highlight this portion of this file, and this is your definition. And the nice thing about this is you implement it once inside your code uh, repository. And it's going to work for every IDE which supports the language server protocol. And that's Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ, NeoVim, and uh, Emacs. And uh, it's great because you only have to do it once. And then it's going to work for everything. No. Go to definition, uh, find occurrences, and uh, renaming, and uh, formatting and many other things. They have a lot of things. It, it, it's quite overwhelming of how many things they have. And uh, yeah, the first thing is syntax highlighting. This is just, you can do it very simply with regular expressions saying that, hey, if you have a module, uh, color it blue. And if you have uh, another keyword, do some other thing and so on. This takes like half a day. And yes, it is. Yeah. Right. Can I make plus to be red and division to be blue, right? In the semantic rules as well. And everywhere I use division and plus. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> the answer is yes, theoretically, but there's two sides to this. 
because you make your ID for your environment, for your language. And then you, if you want to have an ID for your language you're defining, do you really care about K anymore? Well, what is the syntax of my language? Right. Right. Then I start thinking about defining the semantics of my language. Right. And I would like the semantics to use exactly the same syntax uh, rules that people using the language use. Yes. You do that, but do you really need the syntax to be colored exactly like you? Well, <laughs> it's possible. Okay. But it's a big effort for not that much uh, gain. And uh, yeah, this was done by actually somebody from outside the company. Yeah. It, then Virgil saw it and uh, said, hey, uh, this pumpkin demo, I don't know who that is. I have no idea who that is. But he added this and say, what? We, this is so nice, we didn't think about it. Let's invest more time because after that, after I saw this, people in the company say, hey, yeah, I actually use this and uh, I like it. And the Virgil made it even better. And then I started spending time making it even better and better. And uh, I started other features like uh, uh, syntax highlighting, fixing it and updating it and adding error reporting. And uh, <clears throat> go to definition, you just click on something, uh, control click on something, it just takes you to another place. So, or find occurrences, you just, uh, actually probably this is much clearer. Uh, find occurrences, it's based on ESD, not just a search or text. It takes you exactly to the thing you're supposed to find. And uh, this is not actually implemented yet. I want to integrate a debugger and it's gonna highlight the rule you're trying to match and highlight the program you're trying to execute at the same time. Hey, this is what you're executing. This is your matching. And uh, you're probably going to have another window with your environment and say, this is how your environment looks like right, right now. And I want to show a little demo. Would this feature be um, dependent to one backend, or would it work for any backend we have? Like, If you ask ever, it should work for every backend with the big library. <laughs> We're going to see exactly how implemented. By the way, I want this to be very interactive because I'm listening. And if you have a feature that you're working on, you you like you in your you like in your environment, please say so because I'm going to prioritize it in my future work. So, <clears throat> keyword something like this. Uh, <coughs> um, I don't know how. And maybe maybe put it on the white background. Change the. Control K. Or preferences. Settings. Oh. Team. I think you have the team directly, but okay. Dark. Uh light high contrast yeah okay this works oh god <laughs> <laughs> not very pretty okay syntax expression uh plus and you have i have context uh completion based on what you type for example it's uh, types uh, expression i just typed it and then i can write rules row plus a no. b goes to a plus b and i just throw that it's very fast and i think this is helpful for uh writing things down and also i need to compile it now new terminal compile I want to make this interactive in the future, but right now I just have to compile it with a command line. You immediately have that after this, you go to this production. If this is my production, the plus int is defined in this file. Yeah. And then go to references and it just gives you all the occurrences. 
We never had this, so that's why I was saying this is very nice for us. And something which I really use is. <laughs> Can I also update all the references? Not yet. Okay. It's a bit more detailed. <laughs> but yeah, it's possible to do that it, because IDE has this uh, workflow. You just have to implement it, and it's just a simple extra function. It's really faster. Yeah. You want to change the symbol everywhere? Yeah, and you have the whole definition. You know exactly the position of every occurrence is, mm -hmm. and you just go there and replace it. And the IDE does that. You can do that, but you have to tell it how because it's your language it doesn't understand it. And something which I really like is expression selection. You go to a place and it increasingly selects a term based on the AST. And I use this in Java a lot because based I- Based on the, so it parses and the, based on the AST that this thing parses or Based on the parser or the it's based on compile, yeah. It's based on uh, the, the key parser. yeah, the key parser. Yeah. And this is useful because hey, I have this function here you know. with all sorts of things. Just give me the entire thing. I don't have to scroll and go to this is where it starts, this is where it ends. You just go big. Right, but go what parser does it use under the hood? The, the key parser. And it's a key parser. Yeah. Well, that's the point. It's nice to think about this. You implement the language server inside your compiler. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying compiler and command, you just say KLST and it starts the same thing. You, you don't have to learn something new. You don't have to learn anything about the visual to the uh, infrastructure, about Node.js and how it's implemented. It's the thing you already know. That's why it's quite fast. And uh, are you guys using it in the company now? Everybody using it? I think everybody should use it, right? To give you much more feedback. Uh, yeah, um, we're gonna get to that because uh, uh, we can talk about the retention of the KID. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get some more uh, features, people are gonna use it. Uh, I divided this workflow as in three phases because there are multiple things you can do. The first phase is implementing a language server and basically having syntax highlighting, go to definition, error messages, code completion, and uh, renaming maybe if it's very popular. The second part is having a debugger integrated. And basically you have your definition, you have your file that you want to execute. Press the button and everything starts. And you stop at the first uh, Okay, at the first instruction or maybe at the first breakpoint. You pull the breakpoint and it's gonna <laughs> execute until there. And you don't have to know about command line options and patterns and all sorts but of things. But it's not a one button press. No, 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 no. But I mean maybe you can integrate that, right? Because people Yeah, it's gonna be based on that, of course. I think Dwight and Manajbi, Manajbi's mm -hmm. master's thesis was about a debugger for K. You right. say like execute these a thousand steps and a thousand yeah. rules, right? And stop and yeah. show me what to get there. Yeah, it's gonna be based on that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So don't implement your own this kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been talking to Everett about this as well. And, and this Manage. is done Manage. through yeah, this is done through the language server. This is something else, is kind of a sibling, is the bug adapter protocol, which has different events saying that hey, uh the editor says start this program. And give me back the stack, give me back the breakpoint location, and all sorts of things like this. And you just have to configure it. And uh, you you can have a nice interface inside the uh, editor you know. And I've seen many people at this presentation ha using it, and it's very popular. That's why I think this is going to be successful. And the other. The phase three is integrated the, the approver. And uh, you had a slide yesterday about the case summarizer, the workflow. I want to integrate something similar, or uh, the, actually the case summarizer. But when you click on that, you just go to the source of in exactly the file you, you're supposed to and have everything integrated in the same location. It's much more productive to have everything in one place. 
at least for the beaten path, because you're going to have uh, maybe corner cases where the command line is more useful. But for the most parts where you, hey, this doesn't work, why does this not uh, apply? And you just should be able to right click on something and uh, why does this rule does not apply? Don't know, I don't need to know about, hey, this is this location, uh, give me this rule label and stuff like this. You just right click, why doesn't this work? Or right click, execute this, or right click, apply this rule in this location. And uh, for the first part, I think I implemented like 80% of it, what I wanted to do. I just have to do live, uh, error reporting for rules and stuff like this. Uh, for the second part, there are multiple ways to do it. I haven't, I, I thought of it, I haven't worked on it uh, exactly, maybe after this uh, workshop. And the third part is the visual prover. And this is something that uh, Raul from our company started working. You have a KCFG and you click on something, you see the configuration, Andre was uh, keep asking me, "Hey, when is this feature I want that?" For the EVM, you have a bytecode in one of the cells, and it looks ugly. It's not readable. It's not human readable. He wants a custom view, saying that hey, I will have this. Hide it, Hide it or don't make it don't not really, but uh, give me something that it's understandable. Replace that with actual code or references to the original location. Yeah. Or run it through a function. Yeah, pretty print is something. But that's uh, not really for K, this is for the foundry or for the EVM semantics, which is based on K, but not for K. You have to, the main language is going to be Solidity or the bytecode, and you have to start over, but many of the things are already implemented. You just have to customize it for this view. Right. Uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> you can customize it very easily for the other things. You can uh, integrate debugger for your language based on the K debugger, and just have to customize it. Uh, for the prover, the same thing, you just have to customize what you already have. And this can also work in, uh, in a browser because you, if you go to GitHub and say edit this file, you can either edit in, in a just plain text or just opens in a Visual Studio interface inside the browser, which is really cool. But does it load extensions? Yes. Not ours yet. You have to you have to compile it a specific way to work in the browser, and you can't call a local uh, language server. But if we make the uh, K in a, in a, in the web, uh, I've K as a service. K services, yes. Oh. You yeah, K as a service. You can connect to that, and have everything in the browser. So for example, you have your you have. Uh, a uh, smart contract if or you want to prove something about it it's in your repository you say go edit uh, this install the k extension connect to the k services and start doing it in your browser in your repository and that's it it just works it should work it's a long way to there uh, but it's a vision Right, and we have competition for this. Septora already has it. And it's quite popular. It, uh, this is showing here 900, 962 downloads, but they've been working on it for more than a year. So we're a bit behind, but we're catching up. And uh, we published this extension two months ago, and we have 98 downloads. <laughs> And we haven't promoted it. I, we didn't say, we only promoted it inside the company saying, hey, try this and tell us what, what's happening. And probably that's like 30 downloads. But up to 100, people just find it and install it. I don't know how, but it's, it, somehow it's. 
you are using the logo. Well, we should start, I guess, because it's already useful for, uh, yeah, uh, we're talking to Silvia to tweet about it. Yeah. And uh, I think we should get into this, uh, you know, mindset where we, you know, ship product all the time. Yeah. Right. Even if it's not ready, it will never be ready. Right. As soon as it is usable, you know, let's it's already it useful. Let's start getting feedback from people. Exactly. Let's not wait until it's perfect. That was a mistake that we keep making. Right? Yeah. No, it's not ready. It's not ready. And then keep waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and it'll never be ready. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very easy to get it. Uh, I forgot to show you this. Uh, if you want to install this, you just go into Visual Studio, press on this, and say write K here. And it's just going to show you all the extensions. This is the old one, and ours is this one. The pretty blue egg. What is it? You just click install. You just click install, and you have it. And you have to have K in your system. With, with K up, it's very easy right now. I just run something on command line, and it works. And it has uh, this pretty syntax already. And I wanted to just make it to just press a button and get the result inside here. You don't have to work with the command line, and uh, you have all the results in a human readable way because right now we're just dumping a lot of information about all sorts of things because you're limited by the command line. The editor has a lot of extra view options, like three. You can select the side of the tree, you can collapse things, and uh, in my view, this is the way forward. Right, and I think, yeah, this is my last slide. And what I want from you guys is suggestions. Questions or suggestions? Okay, let's thank uh, Radu. And uh, yeah, please, uh, questions, suggestions? So inside your ID, in your side, your workflow, what do you like most? What is the feature that you can't go without? I should ask you if I work with um, Remix under the browser. Okay. And uh, want to switch with Visual Studio code, same code. How proceed? Uh, I'm not sure what Remix is. Remix, it's uh, in, uh, environment from um, Ethereum. Oh, I see. Uh, if you know about it, yeah. You're the ex <laughs> Ethereum expert. <laughs> No, I'm anything but an expert. So uh, the idea is that the Rem Remix, for those who don't know, is a web browser in which you can write Solidity code, and they also have a local instance of EVM, and you can uh, execute your local tests against that and everything. So if you would like to switch, no worries. So if you would like to switch to um, uh, local development, like uh, on VS Code, for example, on your machine, uh, you would, one, have to install the VS Code extension for Solidity, which, uh, and then you would also have to install, I think, yes. And you would also need a toolkit on your project, most likely something like Foundry or Hard Hat. And what that does, it, it allows you to have the local testing node, which Remix provides as well. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Related to that, so suppose that you define the semantics of solidity, right? Right in uh, in K, then can you generate something like Remix, uh, like like a highlighter and all the tools for solidity from your definition of K? Maybe extend it with some other additional attributes, annotations, and so on, right? To encourage people to actually define languages in K. <laughs> And get because they get working. nice, uh, then uh, you know, working environment for the language they care about. Yeah, it's possible. Not only for the semantics, of course, we encourage people to use K for the semantics and model checkers, symbolic execution, verification, mm -hmm. all that. But why not also to give them an IDE for their language from you know an annotated 
syntax maybe only right. i don't know of the language in k yeah it's definitely possible because the id part was very simple i mean you just say call this file which is the language server that's kind of it the, the rest of it is done but through the language server protocol and you just have to generate that and where you have it we have to customize it in this case we're working with solidity this is the syntax this is the semantics this is how you but then navigate. also how to run tests for example in remix and hard head it's called that hard head or foundry right, right. right tests and then uh, you know you run all the tests you say which tests failed which tests passed and right. all that right so it could be nice to that's probably... such a framework for any language you know right. for example we want to do something like foundry for let's say Elton, uh multiverse yeah um give the semantics write some annotations there push a button and get a foundry like tool for that right language. it's possible it's gonna be a lot of work <laughs> the thing about uh, writing tests and making sure that everything is right is very customizable and everybody has a way of well, interpreting that so, right right yeah you oh just have something very simple yeah yeah right and have a list of uh, red and uh, green arrows yeah right yeah yeah that's definitely doable um yeah after this i'm gonna go through the recording and add issues to to the issue board okay any more questions yeah. it's a bit technical so um for example, let's say we want to switch the ID and go from uh, VS Code to something like Cocoon or uh, Vim. Right. So how hard would it be to implement once we have the language server protocol? Done? We already have the language server protocol. You just have to create a way. You have to tell the editor how to start the language server. And in the... just generate and go to and execute this file that's it but have to generate the boilerplate code and modify a single location and we haven't yeah we should keep asking about this so one will give him okay we can talk about if it supports the language server protocol it has to support it because it needs to implement all the events. It has to generate an event from the editor towards the language server, and language server sends back the response with all the information you should display. 